Hey guys, this is Vivian from Star Speaker Arts and welcome back to my channel. And this is my third time recording this voiceover. Because apparently the noise stance in my mic was too high on the last recording and it sounded all robotic and now I have to do it all over again. Yay! <laughs> so, welcome back. We are doing a watercolor piece. Um, these are of my and my friend's original characters. I just really want to draw like a sunny, sweet, cute, sickly sweet drawing. So, here we are. Now, this is one of those drawings where I like it, I don't love it because I did that thing again where I only had the composition in mind, I only had the, you know, the pose in mind but not the color scheme of everything around it. So, I winged it again and it's okay. I think that's okay. You know, I could have avoided this if I planned out my color scheme or if I actually thought about it before I started painting, but I did not. So here we are. So yes, we are starting with a yellow background because I want it to be sunny and I'll tone that down later, but it's gonna be like this for quite some time. So the main palettes that we use in this video are the Paul Rubens watercolors in, in the pan paint version. I'm also using the Paul Rubens Opera watercolor tube colors that I put in a cute, very tiny travel sized palette. I'm also using the Sakura Koi watercolors and the Prima Confusion Skin Tone Set just for the skin. In fact, I almost barely use the Sakura Koi in this one. I think I only use it for this Kinakridon Rose that I really, really love, which honestly, Opera Rose in the opera series probably is the equivalent for it but i just really like that color so i ended up using it so i guess uh, some observations for us doing this painting the paul rubens i believe are professional grade watercolors and the female contractions and school of boys obviously are not so it i this might be like the first or second-ish time where I used these Paul Rubens as the main palette for the painting. Usually it was um, Sakura Koi with the Paul Rubens as a side set or it was a 50-50 where some of the colors were from the Paul Rubens and some of the colors were from the Sakura Koi's. I think this is the very few times where it was the main palette and boy was the experience different. <laughs> so. Before I had all these fancy schmancy watercolors, I started out with the Reeves tube paints which are student grade. They're relatively cheap. They're great for people who just want to start out and don't want to use those really really bad choppy watercolor sets. Um, they're good for students that are just doing like a watercolor class or maybe they just start their art journey or you know they just started their final arts course. They're Totally fine for that. The pigment payoff isn't amazing, but they'll get you through. They're a little bit chalky, I guess, but they're okay. You'll live through them. Um, after graduating from college and I had a job, I upgraded to the Sakura Kois, which still not artist grade, but to the me at that time, I didn't really need or want artist grade. I mean, I still don't need them. I want them, but I don't really need them. Um, and to me, back then, the Sakura Koi's were these amazing, super pigmented, easy to work with colors. The only thing that I had to adjust with them was the fact that they were pan paints and not tube paints. And tube paints to me are somewhat easier to control than pan paints, but you get used to it. And I used those for quite some time. I'd say 17, 18, 19, So. Five to six years, I was using those Sakura Koi's. Uh, sometimes I used the Kodatake Gansai Tambi, which I think are also professional grade, but they're quite different. Those are Japanese watercolors, so they're not going to be part of this discussion today. But mostly the Sakura Koi's, I really, really love them. To me, if you're looking to upgrade or you're more serious about 
doing what they call is they're a good step up without having to go to the profession professional expensive stuff if i'm not mistaken the prang yeah the prang what they call is also good a lot of my friends say that they also swear by prang but you know at the time when i bought those of the boys they were the it the hot thing youtubers my friends they were they were all buying it so i was actually kind of late to the party when i bought it but no regrets they were very very good but now that i've tried the paul rubens watercolor or the, you know the professional grade watercolors it really just hits different the distance of where the pigment travels is further the amount of water you need to use is less and in general i'd say even the mixing might be a little bit better like it's it doesn't separate from each other when you mix them so it's it's a little bit hard to go back to school place now like as my main palette i still really like them and i still really want to use them but it's it's different <laughs> so i'll probably bring them along as like a travel set when i want to go painting when i'm outside or when i go to a different location on vacation or whatever i'll probably still definitely bring this little quest probably my only palette i mean with the prisma color uh, prisma color prisma prima prima marketing skin tones but you know i won't bring this full group because they're a little bit heavy and they're kind of big and yeah um they, they really hit different you don't need them i'd say buy them if you have income and a lot of it to spare <laughs> like you you don't have to pay as many bills or already paid your bills or you know you're already a self-sufficient working salary man or woman <laughs> like i am even though i'm jobless right now <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're they're worth it for the price and to me they they, they won't improve my painting they just feel better to use it's like those vacuum drawing tablets or even the you you on one where it has the screen already so it's a little bit more expensive than just your just flat tablet that has no screen on it it won't make you better it just feels better because it makes it easier or it's more bang for your buck or it makes you faster because of how it just interacts with you or how you interact with it so you don't need them, but it just makes things a little bit easier for you. And I know that's a a trap that many artists, especially younger ones, tend to fall into. Hell, I fell into it so many times. I'm like, oh, it's expensive thing that everyone's using, or YouTubers are talking about. I must have it. I, mean, I still kind of do it sometimes, but you know, I need to have it because the it's the next step in my art journey. No, no, it's not. It's the better art materials. I arguably say it's not the next step aside from paper. Especially for the color artist, I'd say the paper is your number one next step that you really need because they, the way it interacts with, you know, bond paper or like this type of cheaper watercolor paper and then the more expensive watercolor paper it's just miles ahead between the different stages so if there's one thing i'd always say to invest in and i'm sure some people may disagree but the one thing i always say to invest in especially for watercolor is the paper this it just does too much for you it does so so much Yeah, that's, that's one thing I had to adjust to when using the ball ribbons. Mainly how much water I needed because you need very little paint to, to actually just get some really good pigment. Which also means stuff like doing washes or a more faded out color could be a little tricky. Especially if you're not aware of how pigmented they are. So it needs a lot of water <laughs> and it goes very far on the page. But aside from that, uh, I do use the Pima Marketing Skin Color Set for the sponge because skin tones and they already have the paints there. I don't really want to think about it anymore. So I had fun with those. I really don't need any other or any more watercolor sets after this, but 
uh, art order, art supply order thing in. Like, I want to keep on buying the Prima marketing, you know, different confection sets. Just because they're so cute, and the different colors and different palettes are so cute, I'll probably, probably never use them. Or I'll use them like once or twice, or forget about them and go back to the bigger palettes. But they're so cute, they want to collect them. Like, even with like the alcohol markers, so I do have a small set of Copics here and I don't really use them just because the colors are a little bit limited but I've been using the Ohuhu ones which are like a million times cheaper and recently I've been hearing that they also do refills not for all colors yet but for select colors they've been doing refills so that makes it a little bit more sustainable in the long run, I guess. Or, you know, you don't need to even buy a part of a retail for your most used colors. Which made me look into them and they're a lot cheaper, they're more affordable. And for me, who doesn't really use them as my main medium, they'd be pretty good. So my friend was telling me, like, yeah, get the smaller set just to try it out, see if you like them. But the art supply hoarder inside of me wants the really big complete set. Just because complete set sets. <laughs> so I've been holding off buying them until I get the job because it's like 13,000 pesos and I don't have them right now. Or if I do, I put them into the bills. <laughs> so I, I should get the job soon. Hopefully I do get the job soon. Just so that I could buy those. <laughs> and still, you know, and still subscribe to FF. And uh, what else am I thinking for? FF. Um, it's really FF. But there's some reason I want to buy a spell. You know, I got two things. <laughs> but yes, it's a case of you don't need them, but you want them, so suffer. So it was around this point where I realized like yeah, the cardigan and the background they're blending together. Originally the cardigan was supposed to be like a human color, but because her hair is this whitish, very very light blonde color, it also didn't really blend very well. So I decided to make the cardigan yellow and with like some orange undertones. And I would decide to darken the background a bit more by adding brown later, which you'll see after I do all the shadows. And that helps balance the piece a lot more. So it really is a bit of a trust the process, or in my case, a lot of figuring it out as you go along. So yeah, it arts like that sometimes. Like right now, I'm adding purple to the hair because when I do digital art, I would add like a purple shadow or a purple bounce light. So this pillow behind her is purple. Um, 
but you know, in in more technically, you can't take that back. So at this point, it's the oh no, the lace grew up. That's, that might not look very good. It looks a little weird. But I just kept going because it's too late. Just commit, commit, and figure it out. <laughs> And you'll see later, like, after it died, after I added another coat of paint, it did still turn out pretty well. So now I'm just adding some highlights with this white poster pen and yeah, I really still enjoyed making this piece even though there's a lot of uncertainty in the middle, a lot of trust in the process and I hope you enjoyed watching this and maybe drawing along when I was also talking and also just having music sometimes so yeah, uh, subscribe if you enjoyed and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!